Getting into the ring against Mike Tyson, even in the early stages of his professional career, was quite a challenge. Many people today consider those boxers who even thought about facing such a formidable opponent as masochists. In today's video, we'll share a top list that will take you from his early fights to the establishment of his legend, and fights that not only left his opponents in a state of shock, but also amazed the entire world. In 1985, a young Tyson shocked the world in his second professional fight, ending Trent Singleton's career in less than a minute. A right hook made Singleton fall forward, and he was on all fours within just 15 seconds of the fight's start. Well, we didn't get much of a chance to see Tyson. What so his reaction was to get up almost immediately, only to be knocked against the ropes by a left hook, ultimately falling on his back at 33 seconds into the first round. He got back on his feet at the count of three, but Tyson advanced and launched a barrage that made Singleton stumble forward, causing both of his gloves to touch the canvas, leading the referee to end the fight. Young Tyson not only defeated Trent Singleton, who was fighting at the lightest weight of his professional career, but also turned the match into his fourth knockout defeat and the last of Singleton's career. Tyson's eighth professional fight, also in 1985, became a memorable moment. Johnson entered the ring that night with a record of two wins and four losses in his six previous fights, with each loss coming by knockout. Tyson, on the other hand, had an impeccable streak of seven knockout victories. Tyson sent Johnson to the canvas with a left hook just 23 seconds into the fight. Cheers. I'm glad you pointed it out because down here... Johnson managed to get up at the count of three, but Iron Mike quickly launched a powerful right that connected with Michael's jaw, leaving Johnson on the canvas once again. Canvas, 23-pound weight oh, advantage, goodness, and he put the it all right, there. The right to that. Even before starting the count, the referee signaled the end of the fight. Johnson remained in the ring for a few moments before receiving assistance and being seated on a stool to recover from the shock of Tyson's punches. 1985 continued to be a successful year for Tyson's professional career. In his first fight without Cuz D'Amato, who had passed away nine days earlier due to pneumonia, Iron Mike made history once again. The first punch Richardson received in his fight with Tyson was a right cross that sent him to the canvas just eight seconds into the fight. However, he managed to get up at the count of seven and tried to evade Tyson's fury. At one minute and five seconds of the first round, a left hand blocked Richardson's knees, sending him to the canvas again, this time staying down. Tyson's humility was evident when, once the safety count for Richardson was over, he helped him to his feet, along with the referee. When asked if he had ever been hit so hard before, Richardson's response surprised the media, stating, yes, about a year ago. I got hit by a truck. December 1985, and Tyson knew he had to close his professional year on a high note. The Felt Forum in New York would be the first venue where Tyson would be seen wearing what would become his characteristic attire, solid black trunks. Scaff entered the ring having lost his two previous fights against Proud Kilimanjaro and Tim Witherspoon, trying to make the third times the charm saying come true. 17 seconds into the fight, Tyson threw a left hook that put Scaff against the ropes, causing significant bleeding as his nose was shattered. Yeah, Tyson, without fear of blood, continued with a solid right hook to Scaff's jaw, making him retreat and occasionally throw wild hooks. It was a short left hook that put Scaff against the ropes and on his chest at one minute and four seconds of that fateful first round. Tyson does not throw wild punches. Big left hook. Scaff struggled to get up at the count of eight, but the referee indicated that the fight was over. This encounter became Scaff's sixth knockout defeat in his professional career and Tyson's 14th consecutive knockout victory. Moving on to July 26, 1986, Tyson had his second knockout victory over Frazier. Tyson's record positioned him as the man to beat with 24 wins, 22 of them by knockout. 
In contrast, Frazier had 16 wins, with only 7 of them by knockout, and he had been defeated previously by Larry Holmes in the first round. Just 30 seconds into the fight, Tyson used a right hook to knock out Frazier in the first of the scheduled 10 rounds. Frazier was surprised by a quick right hand from Tyson after the bell rang to start the fight. This forced Frazier to retreat and eventually be cornered, where he received the hook that left him lying on the canvas. The referee, Joe Cortez, counted to five before indicating the end of the fight. Moving a bit closer to the present, on September 6, 1986, in Las Vegas, Mike Tyson, still undefeated after 26 professional fights, faced Alfonso Ratliff in his first fight against a former world champion. Ratliff had a record of 21 wins, with 16 by knockout, and 3 losses. Ratliff managed to escape Tyson's pursuit during the first round, only to encounter a fierce left hook that knocked him down early in the second round. Well, he's one of the few guys that was able to uh, test the chin of Mike Tyson in exchange punch, and Ratliff continues on the bike. Tyson saw Ratliff get up at the count of nine, so he launched rapid barges of punches as he pursued him along the ropes. A classic punch. Ratliff doesn't, I don't think he'll get out of this round. Tyson, right. Ratliff didn't last long and was once again shaken by a powerful right hook, setting up a series of punches Tyson had planned, leading to that devastating left hook that put Ratliff on the canvas again. On all fours, Ratliff could hear the referee, Devell Pearl, stop the fight without even beginning the safety count. On May 30th, 1987, Pink Lawn Thomas would only resist until the sixth round of his 12-round fight with Mike Tyson. Tyson retained his heavyweight title, awarded by the World Boxing Council and the World Boxing Association, when he knocked out Thomas two minutes into the sixth round. Surprisingly, during the first round, the entire Hilton Outdoor Stadium in Las Vegas witnessed Thomas effectively neutralize Tyson with well-thought-out tactics, making Iron Mike retreat and stay out of reach. But Thomas is all right. You know why Tyson is with male spread guys? Because he does, and one of those punches is going to land. But that was the key to this punch for uh, pick of Thomas. The jab. the jab breaks the rhythm. Another big left hand. Thomas is hurt. Tyson managed to hold on until the sixth round when he hurt Thomas with a right to the body, followed by a quick right hook to the chin. This led to one of Tyson's favorite punch combinations from that point on, culminating in a left hook to Pinkland's head that left him in serious trouble. Thomas had no choice but to retreat, with Tyson now relentlessly pursuing him with combinations of left and right punches until he was lying on the canvas with glassy eyes. Carlos Padilla, the referee, leaned in toward Thomas to begin the safety count, but when he reached nine, he was interrupted by Angelo Dundee, Pinkland's trainer, who asked him to stop the fight. Thus, in a somewhat controversial manner, the referee had no choice but to end the fight, giving Tyson a technical knockout victory. We arrive at the end of our video with a match that took place on January 22, 1988, when the Atlantic City Convention Center in New Jersey witnessed the clash between Mike Tyson and Larry Holmes. Tyson was the favorite in the betting odds at 8 to 1, at only 21 years old, 17 years younger than Holmes, at 38. He delivered an exemplary boxing performance as the clear aggressor throughout the match.
However, it wasn't until the fourth round that he managed to reach Holmes, who was on the brink of retirement. Holmes got into serious trouble after taking a powerful right from Tyson that landed squarely on his chin, prompting him to fall into Mike's corner. Right now getting through this fourth round is the biggest problem. Oh! Right hand! Down goes that! At the count of four, Holmes got up, and while the referee, Cortez, gave the mandatory eight count, Larry tried to clear his thoughts by shaking his head a couple of times, but Tyson was already on the attack. The violent punches Tyson was throwing occasionally made Holmes' head snap back. The ringside attendants began to shout for the fight to be stopped, but Holmes could only escape from Tyson's relentless pursuit. Holmes abruptly halted his retreat after taking a strong right hook from Tyson, and as soon as he fell on his back to the canvas, Cortez finally signaled the end of the fight. Recovering from Tyson's blows took Holmes three long years, during which he had no other scheduled fights. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget that the best way to support our content is by liking it and subscribing to our channel. Which of all the fights mentioned in our top list impressed you the most? We look forward to reading your comments.